important. This is a, an important place to, to talk about an important issue. So um, I'm, I'm glad to, to be here. Um, I, I've written a note that I, I think I will do just because we may even want to have more discussion about it. Um, I, I'm, but I'm sure all of you have a clear understanding in your own minds about why people committed to peacemaking, committed to, um, to nonviolence would in fact be concerned about climate change. Uh, uh, the scriptures certainly, the, the, the Hebrew scriptures make it very clear that there's a, an intimate relationship between, between both uh, peace and justice and that wonderful verse in, in the Psalms that says that justice and peace shall kiss each other, um, an intimate relationship between the two. Um, obviously, if whenever there is injustice, which certainly in the climate crisis there is plenty of, um, the, the task of uh, people is to respond and to bring it to work toward peace. Um, for often for people of faith, it's it's God who's doing that, but we become a part of God's activity in in the world. Uh, but certainly, there is a great deal of injustice that is very uh, clear in the in the climate crisis, and um, uh, it's when we contemplate possible scenarios for the future, it's even scarier. Of uh, thinking about migration and thinking about uh, what what in fact might um, might happen, and so that's uh, that that is a, a major concern. In fact, I think that's its own topic. We we could probably spend a lot of time on that, but but I think in this in this with this group, it's important just to see if we're all on the same page, and 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 we can discuss it uh, later. Um, so the history of, of um, why the nations of the world uh, are working on climate change goes back to 1992, when there was what was called the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. It was called the UN Conference on the Environment and Development. And among the topics that they talked about was climate change, and this was 1992. And uh, they actually made a commitment um, signed by uh, President H.W. Bush that uh, they would um, that they would create a process called the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change, and that that uh, process would have an annual meeting uh, that, that started in 1995. And the annual meeting was called the Conference of, Par of Parties, which, of course, is COP. The first COP was um, in 1995 in Berlin. And we just um, engaged in the um, uh, 26th uh, uh, Conference of Parties um, in, in Glasgow. Uh, Scotland. Uh, I, I was I was honored to be a, a part of the of, of a group there uh, as called an official observer. It was my fifth COP. Um, I was at the one in Kyoto, in Den Haag, in Paris, uh, Madrid, and this year in in Glasgow. Uh, don't know about next year. Um, when the next COP takes place, I will be 80. So I'm not sure uh, 80 year old guy is gonna be doing that, but we'll see. Um, um, but I'm absolutely committed to the process and uh, think it's very, very important that it, it be as broad as, 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 as possible. Um, one thing I just, just to say, um, um, the faith community has always been involved in the COP process. The, there were representatives of national denominations present uh, in Rio and 
uh, my guess is that every single cop since then, um, and that's uh, of all faiths, not just Christian, uh, because um, it's a concern, of course, for all for all humankind. But the the ethical issues are so profound that um, certainly people of faith have wanted to really be a part of that, um, be a part of that effort. Um, so um, the goals, uh, as you know, the, the Paris, the, the Conference of Paris set came up with the Paris Agreement, and uh, which uh, outlined a process for how the nations of the world would uh, be operating uh, up until uh, 2050, and um, which is when one of the most important goals will hopefully have taken place. But two goals to, to talk about that just kind of keep in mind as we as we look at the process. One is that um, the goal is to have to have a limit on the increase in the global temperature uh, since about 1880 is, is how they measure it. And we're up, we have an increase now of 1.1. Uh, degrees centigrade. And the goal is to keep it no more than 1.5 degrees uh, centigrade by 2050. The other, um, the other, uh, the other goal is that, <coughs> that the nations would achieve net zero, which means that between uh, stopping um, as many emissions as we can stop, but also having, but counting on other help that would absorb the carbon that already, and the, and the greenhouse gases that already exist. And that's why it's called net zero, because you're adding both the, the, the emissions that would be absorbed uh, by plant life and, and other means, um, as well as stopping the emissions. So we want to get to net zero by 2050. So 2050 is the, the year that, that uh, all of the judgments will be in fact made. Um, uh, I don't plan to be around for that, but it's, um, um, it's going to be an incredibly important year. Um, so the, the, the question I think a lot, a lot of people are raising and, and including my myself is um, was COP26, the meeting in, in Glasgow, uh, a success? And um, I would certainly say it had successes. There were some things that happened that hadn't happened before that were really very important. Um, and then there were some ways of judging the the COP, which were disappointing, which didn't happen as well as um, uh, I had hoped and lots of tens of thousands of other people, um, um, if not hundreds of thousands of other people, I had hoped it would happen. Uh, but, um, but there were some successes. And I, and I, and I do want to talk about that a little bit because um, it, it isn't important just to say um, Glasgow was a failure because it really wasn't a failure. I mean, it, it had such uh, major successes in, in some things that I, I just think it's really important to, to, uh, to, to talk about. For instance, uh, there was an agreement uh, by more than a hundred uh, countries, and I don't know how many uh, right now, because I'm sure that number keeps going up. Um, there were, there are 197 countries that are involved in the process, and um, so, uh, and and that's a commitment to end deforestation. And deforestation, of course, is really important because that is a major way that carbon and other greenhouse gases get absorbed. And there's more than a hundred. Uh, nations that signed a pledge to to end deforestation, and um, uh, and and aimed by that by 2030, that will protect 85 percent of the world's forests. 
Um, and guess what? It was signed by Brazil of all countries. And, um, you know, you can be cynical and say, well, they, ju they just signed it, they don't really mean it. Um, and that's probably true for every nation, but, um, but, it's, um, but that was an important accomplishment and had not happened before. Uh, second is uh, there was, uh, the issue of methane. The methane gas is one of the major greenhouse gases. And um, there, were, there is a global methane pledge, 105 countries signed that. Um, and, um, and the United States played a, a role in helping to uh, broker that. Um, um, I have really um, profound respect for John Kerry. Um, he's, he was all over the globe um, working on a variety of issues, including his relationship with um, Beijing and had um, 17 meetings in Beijing with the with his uh, equivalent in, in the Chinese government. And, uh, uh, and President Biden is obviously in, really committed to this issue and, and wants it to happen. And he couldn't have chosen a better uh, envoy, I think, than, than John Kerry. And, um, and John was very um, visible in the, during the conference. I mean, he was, he was every place. And, uh, uh, had some exchange with them myself, and um, um, it was just really, really neat to to see him. Then uh, one of the controversies that still exists um, is in the whole area of finance, and that has to do with um, there are that. I mentioned that it's the poor countries that are often hurt the first and um, are really have uh, the most to, to fix and the most to, de to um, have to respond to. And uh, they, of course, don't have the money to be of help. And there's a number of funds that exist that uh, are uh, try to help poor countries deal with both the process of uh, ending their own burning of fossil fuels, but also um, um, having to, to uh, try to fix the things that got broken. It also includes a thing called, that's probably the most controversial of all, of all topics called loss and damage, which has to do with um, providing funds to countries where uh, it, you can't easily fix it. You're going to have to deal with them in a more radical way, like moving the country, which the island of Kiribati and the South Pacific has had to do. They bought land in Fiji because their, their, their country is clearly going to be inundated by, um, by um, sea level rise. So um, anyhow, the money, uh, the promise that the nations made in Paris was that, that they would spend four years kind of practicing, kind of um, like in a farm club in baseball, uh, getting ready to, the, to giving $100 billion a year uh, for climate finance to help the poorer countries deal with with the various issues that, that they're facing. And to give them that practice, they gave four years. You've got four years, folks, to raise $100 billion. And the sad thing is they didn't do it. And now the, the, uh, the process says, from going forward, you've got to raise $100 billion a year. So one of the things that was really good and we need to hold his feet to the fire is that President Biden said he will quadruple the amount of money that the United States gives uh, by 2024. Uh, the request was that every country double the amount of money and he has indicated that he'll quadruple it. Um, 
so we'll see what happens, but that's a very important piece. And in, and the infrastructure bill, even though it's meant for this country, obviously is a way to, to help stimulate even more money. And um, we not only have to be responsible for, for our, um, our being the number two emitter of greenhouse gas emissions, uh, but we have to uh, be able to help other nations do that as well. So money is a, a huge part of this going forward. Um, that's why the Build Back Better bill um, is so important. We need the kind of money that that, uh, that, that proposals and uh, that and a good, good chunk of it is, is designed for a response to the climate crisis. And so uh, I actually had an exchange with, um, with Senator Collins uh, Enviro environmental staff this week uh, and just said, you know, hey, this, you know, I, I know that, the, that Mitch McConnell was saying no Republican should vote for it, but um, this is such an incredible time to um, to really try to deal honestly and, and fully uh, with with the climate crisis, and that we need that bill. We need that bill in a huge way, and I sure hope. Um, well, I'm I, I I know a lot of people are working on it, and um, <coughs> and I intend to keep doing that as as well. Um, one of the things that also happened, and a lot of this were, were like announcements that got made at, at, at the conference, um, because they were not necessarily on the agenda, but they, they uh, got made and, and did, did dominate a lot of conversation. Um, and that is that the United States and China have pledged to work together to help both of them be more faithful to be more effective, to mo be more aggressive in, um, in their work on, on uh, climate. Uh, that, that could be in a, a very useful task, obviously. Um, China is still a major user of coal and with India played a role in weakening the final statement on coal that was that, that was issued as a part of the overall statement, and that was sad. Um, um, but it's also very tricky um, diplomatically. And um, again, I I, uh, I trust uh, John Kerry's instincts, and I certainly trust his commitments here to to work on this. But that's not an easy task. Um, the other one of the other announcements, and there were several, but one of the other was the six major automobile, automobile companies have said that they're going to phase out ga gas powered cars by 2035 in certain markets um, and other markets that would be 2040. And um, that's that's a huge that's been mentioned before when when. Um, uh, I was actually in Michigan when General Motors uh, said that, that they would they would do that, um, but that's going to be huge. And then we obviously need the supporting mechanisms like um, uh, charging stations and stuff like that to be able to uh, allow electric vehicles to to uh, take place. Um, over 40 countries pledged to phase out coal. Uh, and coal is, of course, the dirtiest of all of the fossil fuels. Uh, it included 23 uh, countries that for the first time, first time uh, promised that they wouldn't uh, issue more permits for new coal plants. And um, Part of what we need to do with China is to get them to stop the replacement process that they have for, for uh, their their coal plants. But there were some uh, 
major coal users that join that pledge, including Poland and and the Ukraine and Indonesia, South Korea. Um, and so that's something to build on. Unfortunately, the United States didn't didn't sign it, China didn't sign it, the, the, Russia didn't sign it, Brazil didn't sign it, but 40 nations did. Uh, we've, I've, I've just talked about the infrastructure bill and, um, and, ab and about the Build Back Better bill. Um, hopefully that will pass soon. Coal, uh, again, was confronted in a way that it hadn't been confronted before at a COP. Um, and that was uh, that was um, hugely important. We, I, I talked about the agreement with the 40, but um, at the end, the final statement was weakened by the political work of China and India, and that was uh, that was frustrating, certainly. Um, and um, so, yeah, that's. Uh, the, the greatest shortcoming of COP26 was that every nation had to come up with goals of, of what they wanted to accomplish by both 2030 as an interim date and then also 2050. And, um, and one way of doing it is to add up those goals and see if in fact that's going to both achieve the 1.5 degree maximum centigrade um, uh, goal that the nations have, as well as getting to net zero by 2050. And the sad part is they failed the math test. Uh, that didn't happen. They, they did not do that. And, um, but that is, uh, that is a task that I think we all can be involved in and do recommend it. Um, that um, um, in Yarmouth, for instance, uh, some high school students have been pushing the town council to agree to a statement that would uh, get to net zero by 2030. That's a tough thing to do. And, um, um, but the fact that the town council is even looking at it as possibly their job, um, uh, Portland and South Portland, of course, have had a plan for about a year and a half, two years now, uh, and um, they're they're getting a, a net zero by 2045. I think it is. Um, I might have that wrong, but um, uh, <coughs> the, those are important. I mean, if we could get 15 towns in Maine to agree to to do that themselves. They don't have to wait for the, the feds to do this. They don't have to wait for, for uh, Janet Mills and the, and, and the state of Maine to, to do this. This is something that uh, towns like Yarmouth and, and uh, uh, Falmouth and, and Cumberland, and, you know, you can name all the towns in, in Maine you want. I mean, it's something that is very doable. Um, and so it, it'd be, be really important. And that sort of gets me to my bottom line. Um, at this point, whether or not Glasgow was a success, I think is up to us. I mean, are we going to take the, the good things that happen and make sure that they happen here in Maine? That's, that's the task, you know, and we, we can advocate with great vigor for, for those things. I mean, in my case, I'm talking about my nine grandchildren. I mean, how do I want them to, to have to suffer when 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 they become adults, I, I mean that's that I can't I, mean, I can't even imagine that you know I mean that's just so awful, and um, so it's really now up to us. The success of Glasgow is really the success of the of the Yarmouths of the, of this world. Um, nations um, and there was some really good leadership that that was extended. Include especially by President Biden, um, uh, Justin Justin Trudeau was also good. I mean, the number of, of leaders were were very clear, um, and and I think that's now on our shoulders. And I probably have talked too long, Martha, and I apologize.